Hello there and welcome back to Gemma Movie Recap. Today I'm going to recap 12 Strong, the declassified true story of the Horse Soldiers, is a 2018 American action war film, directed by Nikolai Fugelsig and written by Ted Talley and Peter Craig. In the wake of the September 11th attacks, Captain Mitch Nelson leads a U.S. Special Forces team into Afghanistan for an extremely dangerous mission. Once there, the soldiers develop an uneasy partnership with the Northern Alliance to take down the Taliban and its Al-Qaeda allies. Outgunned and outnumbered, Nelson and his forces face overwhelming odds in a fight against a ruthless enemy that takes no prisoners. But before we start, please support our channel by subscribing and click the bell icon for future notifications. Now, let's start. The movie starts with news reports on previous assaults on U.S. territory orchestrated by the terrorist leader Osama bin Laden. It then transitions to September 11, 2001, where Mitch Nelson, alongside his wife Jean and daughter Maddie, witnesses the footage of hijacked planes crashing into the World Trade Center. Simultaneously, Nelson's fellow soldiers in Kentucky become aware of the news as well. Nelson approaches his commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Max Bowers, seeking permission for his team to go to Afghanistan. However, Bowers declines the request as Nelson has recently returned from active duty in Kuwait, and the team's warrant officer, Hal Spencer, has initiated the process of retiring. Undeterred, Spencer discusses the matter with Nelson and then confronts Bowers, ripping up his retirement papers, emphasizing that the team is more than capable of handling the mission. Consequently, Nelson reassumes his role as the team's captain. Nelson tells Jean about the mission, and she worries about him going back out there and possibly not coming back. Likewise, Spencer says goodbye to his wife and son, while their comrade Sam Diller is incentivized by his wife to come back since she won't give him any last-minute sex before he must depart. The trio of soldiers, along with nine other men Ben Milo, Sean Coffers, Vern Michaels, Fred Falls, Scott Black, Pat Essex, Kenny Jackson, Bill Bennett, and Charles Jones convene with Bowers and Colonel John Mulholland for a comprehensive briefing on their mission. Their objective is to rendezvous with the Afghan warlord from the Northern Alliance, General Abdul Rashid Dostum, and collaboratively capture the city of mazar i sharif This strategic move aims to thwart the Taliban's efforts to disperse their forces across the region and to incapacitate Osama bin Laden's operations. The plan involves executing targeted airstrikes to neutralize the Taliban. The team is sent off to fly to Afghanistan where they are taken to a camp site by friendlies initially mistaken to be the enemy. The men meet with a CIA operative who tells them about the ongoing feud between some of the generals in the area fighting against the Taliban. In the morning, Dostum and his men meet with the team. As a gesture of goodwill, the team presents Dostum with horse feed and vodka. Nelson takes the initiative to engage in a conversation with Dostum, aiming to build rapport and establish a common understanding of how to tackle the Taliban threat. Amidst this interaction, the team witnesses the Taliban launching an attack on a school merely because a woman is teaching the children. The ruthless Taliban leader, Mullah Razan, instills fear among the young students before callously executing the teacher to serve as a horrifying example. From a distance, Nelson and Dostum observe the Taliban's movements and strategize their approach for initiating the airstrikes. However, Dostum expresses caution, knowing that the U.S. government may withdraw support if they lose even a single American soldier. Despite the risks, Nelson decides to call in the airstrikes. Two, six, five, four, three. <laughs> But unfortunately, they miss most of the enemy targets. As the situation intensifies, the soldiers find themselves under fire from the Taliban. In the ensuing firefight, they manage to eliminate several enemy combatants while ensuring the safety of the TFD team members. The team's next objective is to pass through the Tianji Gap in an attempt to catch up to the Taliban. However, while en route, they come under attack by the Taliban forces. In the midst of the battle, Nelson becomes aware of Dostum's men bringing tanks into the conflict, even though Dostum never informed him about having such heavy weaponry.
After the fight, Nelson confronts Dostum, expressing his dissatisfaction with the withholding of crucial information that could have made a significant difference in their planning and safety. In his frustration, Nelson accuses Dostum of being just another warlord, implying that he may be acting in his self-interest rather than genuinely collaborating with the U.S. forces for a common goal. After collaborating on a more effective plan, Nelson arranges for some of his men to join forces with a team from one of the rival warlords. Together, they devise a strategy to position several soldiers among the flanks, aiming to intercept Razin and his men before they reach Mazar. Initially, Dostum is reluctant about this approach, but Nelson persuades him that it's the best available plan. The soldiers execute their attack on the Taliban, with airstrikes raining down and soldiers courageously charging into battle on horseback. The intense engagement results in many Taliban members being either blown up or killed by gunfire. Despite Razin's attempts to escape in a van, he crashes, leaving him stranded and nowhere to run. Dostum corners him, and in a decisive move, puts a bullet in his head, ending the threat posed by the merciless Taliban leader. The soldiers proceed towards Mazar, where Dostum and his men take the lead, while Nelson and his team have fulfilled their part of the mission. The two leaders part ways on amicable terms, having developed a mutual respect and trust for each other through their shared experiences. In the aftermath, the Taliban ultimately surrenders to Dostum's forces, laying down their weapons. With the mission accomplished, Nelson and his men return home. The movie concludes with a touching final scene, showing Nelson reunited with his wife Jean and daughter Maddie, relishing their time together and cherishing the peace and safety they now have. The closing text narrates that, against all odds, every member of Task Force Daggers survived their daring mission and successfully returned home. Despite initial estimates suggesting the capture of Mazar i Sharif would take two years, the team accomplished it astonishingly in just three weeks. This triumph dealt a severe blow to Al-Qaeda, considered one of their most significant defeats. Due to the highly classified nature of the operation, the brave men involved returned to their regular lives without receiving public recognition for their remarkable deeds. However, in 2014, General Dostum went on to become the Vice President of Afghanistan and maintained a close friendship with Mitch Nelson. The movie shows a picture of a statue erected at the World Trade Center, dedicated to the heroic horse soldiers, and includes a photograph of the real-life team that undertook this historic and heroic mission. The End What do you think of the movie? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like and support the channel by subscribing and click the bell icon so that you won't miss our future recaps. And if you have any movie you want us to recap, please do tell us in the comments section as well. And until next time.